Okay. Oh, hi, gozaimasu. Good morning, everybody. Konnichiwa, konbanwa, wherever in the world you may be. Thanks for tuning in. So, sorry about the noise that you might be able to hear in the background, but、uh, my neighbor's getting his door worked on, so hopefully that won't last too much longer. All right. So, today we're going to be looking at、uh, basically going to be continuing on with our kanji that we've been looking at. So,、uh, in one of the previous lessons, I posted a, a picture、uh, which has basically all the kanji you need to know for year 12, and that includes both receptive and productive kanji. So, we'll be continuing on with that. And then,、uh, if we have time near the end, we'll be looking at directions. All right, how we do directions in Japanese. Now, this is、uh, if you look one of my previous videos. About how to do well in、uh, year 12 exams. This is one section that I、uh, talk about. It's、um, very common to have、uh, a bit on directions in Japanese. Alright. Okay. Alright. So,、uh, I've got a link to the Google Doc in the YouTube description, so just please open that up.、Um, I'll be going through that and typing in along with the lesson, so I'd really recommend you do that.、Uh, the link's up here as well. If you, for whatever reason you can't access it, you can just type this in, it'll take you to the Google Doc.、Uh, I also have here a link to an ad I have up on Gumtree, so I run Japanese lessons. These are just kind of a sample of what the type of lessons I do.、Um, if I do online lessons, so basically through Skype or Google Hangouts, It's $40 an hour, but if you do more than two hours in, in one lesson, it's、um, $70. So basically, an extra $30 for every hour after that. And I mainly do year 12 and I guess a little bit of year 11, but、uh, generally, especially at this time of the year, the majority of my students are year 12. But I teach everyone, okay? If you want to learn Japanese, I can teach you. It's,、uh, a lot of people say Japanese is very difficult. I agree that some parts of Japanese are difficult, but if you just want to be able to speak, Do everyday conversation.、Uh, maybe you travel to Japan and you want to experience the culture a bit more,、um, get around a bit easier,、uh, then I can definitely help you out.、Um, it doesn't matter how old you are, it doesn't matter what you think your language ability is, trust me, I can teach you. Okay, so if you could just email me here,、uh, we can get started. All right, so we've got a whole bunch of ones we've, we've already looked at. So、we'll、go down to the bottom here. Alright, so this is where we're starting today. Okay, so the, the first thing I want to point out, I I'm, I'm,、uh, just want to remind people that here I've just copy and pasted the、uh, dictionary entry for the kanji, okay? And I use、uh, Jim Breen's dictionary. It's,、uh, you'll be able to find it on Google. I find it very, very good for this particular type of thing. And we see I, I've edited the entry a bit because there's a lot of kind of information we don't need. But the first thing we have in this square brackets here, this, is,、uh, this kanji is pronounced as, well, it's oto, this means sound. All right, this is a good word to learn. But here we read it as on, on, okay? And on is kind of short for on yomi, okay? And this is our Chinese pronunciation of a kanji, okay? So the kind of the original Chinese pronunciation that this kanji had, okay? And then the next one in square brackets, this kanji here we read as kun. Okay, and again, short for kun yomi. And this is the Japanese、uh, reading and basically meaning of the kanji. Okay, and then we have our kanji for a. All right, and a is、uh, the word for, well, basically it represents English. Okay, so we have our English translation here. Now, when you're learning a kanji, I would always recommend that you try and learn the kunyomi first. Okay? Try and learn the kunyomi first. It kind of does depend on the kanji a lot of times, but generally the kunyomi is the best thing, especially if it's a verb. All right? If you can, if you can tell by the u ending, here it isn't, right? But here, if you look and see it's an u ending, it's really good to learn that because that'll really tell you the meaning of the kanji, and that's very useful for when you see it in other words. Okay? Now, when you're really.、Um, Basically, when you've really learnt the, the Japanese meaning and the English meaning, 
then you can uh, look at learning the on yomi, okay, the Chinese pronunciation. I mean, all of them are important, but if we're talking about priority here, that's how I would that's how I would do it. Okay. Now, once you feel pretty confident that you know the kunyomi well, and like you can basically write it, if someone, if I say hidari, can you write this kanji out? Then the next step is you want to try and remember that onyomi, okay? And the best way to do that is actually to learn a word that that onyomi comes in, rather than trying to learn it like this, okay? Learn it like just like it's a dictionary and you're just kind of rote memorizing, because it, after a while it gets pretty hard to keep all these w sounds in your head. So it's better off that we try and learn a word like this, okay? Now I've tried to pick words which, um, first of all, are, are, are useful words and they're likely to come up in year 12. But also, also that these words kind of give you a good feel for the various meanings kanji can have, okay? Now this left one is not a great example because, you know, left is kind of a, a pretty solid concept most people get. But when we're talking about kanji for like sympathy or stuff like this, you know, th this what, what sympathy means in Japanese, it can kind of change depending on what compound the kanji comes in. So it's good to learn at least a few words and then you can kind of say, oh yeah, this kanji can mean this, this and this, all right? It's not going to be very... Um, it's not like you can make borders between the words, like you um, like you can go, okay, this kanji is this English word, this kanji, because there's going to be overlap, there's going to be disconnect, all this kind of stuff. Okay, so let's look at our first one. So our first one here, uh, by the way, I've highlighted the ones which I, which I think, these are the ones you kind of have to learn. Um, the ones I haven't highlighted, I would probably not bother doing it for now. If, and uh, I want to point out that this is for year 12, okay, in Australia. Uh, for example, if you're doing JLPT study, some of these you will have to learn, okay, depending on what level you do. But these are at least, this is what, uh, this is, if you know all these, this will be enough for the year 12 exams. Okay, so on Yomi, we see a sa, okay, and we have hidari, all right, so this is how we want to think of this kanji, hidari, and we see this means left. Okay, and a really good word to learn this is sasetsu. Okay, left turn comes up a lot in directions. Okay, next one of course is migi. Migi. All right, so again kunyomi first migi. So to the right, and here we just learn u. Okay, u is our best one. All right, and similarly we have usetsu. All right, sasetsu usetsu. I assume that this is not going to come up correct on the on the video, but anyway, <laughs> it's my left sasetsu usetsu. Now, uh, a common problem a lot of people have is how do you tell the difference, you know, when you're trying to read it in a, in a document or whatever, how do you tell the difference between hidari and migi, okay? So, uh, it's I, for me, I, ha I came up with this little mnemonic, so you're, you're welcome to use it if you wish. So, when you look at this hidari, we can see that the, the kind of top part is the same, right? We kind of have a katakana na looking uh, character there. But on the bottom, we have what looks like a katakana e for left. And Miki has a katakana, ro, uh, looks like a katakana ro. Now, this is not a ro, by the way. This is probably kuchi, I would say. But anyway, um, it's very interesting if you look at the, where kanji, uh, hiragana and katakana comes from, because it actually both they both come from kanji. So I find that very interesting. And there's lots of um, good infographics on the internet you'll be able to find with this kind of stuff. Oh, man, the working is intense. I don't know how long they're going to do it. I really hope it doesn't come up too loud. It's very, it's very loud from where I'm sitting. But um, anyway, oh, let me just record this. Um, anyway, okay. So what I do is I say, well, we got a katakana e, all right? And when we think of the word left, okay, we have an e in there, left, okay? And also when we have a katakana ro, this starts with an r, so right, okay? E and ro, okay? That's that's what I use. Um, until now, or I shouldn't say until now, but now, when I hear sasetsu usetsu, like it's just the word is in my head. I don't have to use this mnemonic anymore. Okay, so eventually you'll get good enough. You don't have to worry about it. Okay, our next one. All right, really handy one. Okay, so when we're talking about kanji, one thing I think is really uh, not emphasized very well in uh, Japanese tuition is radicals. Okay, when we're dealing with kanji, we can see that there's like kind of composite parts. All right, of kanji, and this one is a really good one to learn. Okay, this is met. Now, I, I was, um, if we look at an example here of why this is important, right? If we think of the word miru, all right, our verb to see, all right, what have we got here? Well, we've got an eye on top of some legs, okay? So it's important, um, not just so you can kind of recognize kanji uh, when you see them, 
but also it's very important when you're writing kanji, okay? Because you might go, wait, are there, is there is there two strokes in the middle or is there one stroke? And all you have to go is, oh yes, uh, it's I, and I has two strokes, okay? Because you know, day or sun only has one stroke, okay? And you can kind of say, well, obviously, it's, if it's look, it's probably going to be I rather than sun. Okay, so we got me. All right, we we should you know use our kunyomi here, me. All right, so this means I. All right, and you can kind of imagine if you if you rotate it, it's like an I on its side. Um, some people actually say it's upright. Um, I, don't, I don't really mind which one you do. Okay, so our onyomi, now even this I would probably say it's not super useful uh, to learn, but we could come up with a word, for example, mokuji, which is a table of contents. Um, I know this is the word I learned to learn this onyomi, but yeah, it's not super important. I think you could get by with just learning me. Alright, so we have a sentence like me ga itai. Mega itai desu. Alright, my eye hurts. Alright. Next one. Alright, super important kanji, this one. Now, I've edited this uh, dic <laughs> dictionary entry uh, quite a lot, but uh, you'll be surprised at how many readings uh, this kanji has. Uh, also, it's used a lot in names, so it has lots and lots of different readings for names as well. I'd, uh, I'd like to see if, if any of you guys, um, I don't have the original here, but if you look this up in Jim Brand's dictionary, you'll see what I'm talking about. It's crazy the amount of readings this has. I'd be uh, interested to see if you guys have a, a rival for this kind for this kanji. I don't think I've seen a kanji with more readings than this. The only one I think which would kind of come close would be shita or ue, because we've got agaru, ageru, noboru, no, you know, sagaru. All the, there's so many different verb readings for that. But even that, I don't think it has that many uh, readings compared to this. So yeah, leave a comment. If uh, you can think of a, a character, which well, if you come across a character which is more than this, I'd be happy to be proved wrong. But at least uh, from my very limited uh, Japanese, uh, it's definitely one of the, the the biggest I can think of. Okay, so what are we dealing with here? Well, we've got a, a few readings we have to know about this one, and it's also it's, it's a very kind of fluid concept as well in English. All right, so life. Okay, this is a, a really common one. And this reading of ikiru, this means to live, okay? So, life is, is going to be a big one. And we see birth, all right? So, this word, umareru. So, itsu maremashita ka? So, when were you born? Um, so, yeah, both of these, ikiru and umareru. Um, yeah, so, I, I would say probably it's not going to come up that often, okay? If we're really going to prioritize, uh, if you're going to only come out with one reading for this kanji, I would say, say, okay? And this is probably what you're... A lot of you guys are very familiar with, right? We have gakusei, uh, seikatsu, I think I put down there. Yeah, seikatsu. Okay, so sei is overwhelmingly going to be the, the big one. Now, this is also handy when we think of other words. Now, this is unlikely to come up on uh, Japanese, you talk Japanese exam, but it could. All right, we've got this word dansei, and I guess we should also put josei. Okay, so this is male and female, all right? Now, if we look at this say, this is what I was talking about where kind of, this is not so much a radical, but when we look at parts of kanji, it can help a lot because this kanji, we see the right-hand side is the same as the kanji we're looking at here, and it's also read as say. okay? So that's that's kind of a good thing to keep in mind that, uh, you know, if you learn the kind of fundamental kanji first, it can really help you when you look at the more complicated ones. All right, now the last reading that might be good to learn for this one is nama. Okay, now this means like raw or um, fresh or live kind of thing as well, right? So we can say nama hoso, right? This is a live broadcast, okay? Not being edited or whatever. So basically, ima wa nama hoso desu, all right? Live broadcast. Um, and we can also say like nama biru, okay? And this is um, draft beer, right? You know, pouring out of a tap. Um, and we can also say nama kusai, all right? This means that basically it smells like fish. Basically something smells bad. It smells off. Okay, so nama kusai, because kusai is a bit of a negative meaning, okay? So when we use it with nama, it's kind of saying, yeah, it smells too fresh, right? It's it's raw. Uh, not raw, sorry, it's uh, it's going off, is what it should say. All right, now one word that uh, comes up a lot for year 12, okay? I would say there's about 10 words, which uh, you just have to know, all right? Seikatsu, this is one of them, all right? For both of these kanji, both sei and katsu, okay? And sei katsu means living or life, all right? And we see this a lot. It's it's often a, um, a semester two theme for a lot of you guys, uh, which is nichijou sei katsu, okay? Everyday life. And we have, you know, nihonjin no sei katsu, stuff like this, okay? So this, this word's gonna come up quite a lot and 
It's better. It's really good to remember, right? Oboi doi te kudasai. Okay, got a bit of a weird gap there. Let's get rid of that. Okay, next one. All right, so we've got a color here. Now, there are definitely a few colors worth learning. Uh, we'll, again, we're going to come... All the ones that I go through in this list are, are worth learning. But basically, black, white, red, yellow. Mm, probably don't worry about green. You want to know how to say green, but it's a bit of a difficult kanji. Um, that's about it. Those are the... Uh, I say red, right? Yeah. Yeah, red, green, yellow, blue... Blue, I didn't say blue. Black, white. These are the main colors you want to you wanna learn. Okay, but we'll get to all of those a bit later. Okay, so, yeah, again, we should probably start from the kunyomi here. So, shiro. Okay, this is white. Now, I've also highlighted shiroi, okay? Because remember, with our colors in Japanese, we can kind of treat them as nouns and as adjectives. So, when we're describing something that is white, we use this shiroi, all right? So, I've got here, shiroi kutsu, all right? White shoes. You wouldn't say shiro kutsu. It's kind of a bit weird. All right. Uh, then the other one is haku. Now I'd say probably it's not worth learning this. It's, it's it comes up a bit later. A very important, uh, but for now it's probably not useful for year twelve. But we have words like hakuban. Okay, we have kokuban, blackboard, hakuban, a whiteboard. Uh, but having said that, I actually put this word in here originally, then took it out because uh, I'm not sure if this is really the, uh, especially kokuban. I mean, in Japan they still use blackboards. Um, well, last I checked, they did anyway. Um, they, they do love their blackboards over there. But, yeah, hakuban doesn't come up uh, too much. Alright, but sh we can get by with shiro or shiroi, I think, for these two. Alright, this one. This is a really important one, okay? I mean, I'm going to probably say that with every single one of these. Uh, but this is one a lot of people tend to skip, okay? Now, it means uh, rice field or rice paddy, okay? And we d can just read it as ta. And, you know, just for me, when I look at this kanji, it looks like it looks like a rice paddy, okay? It's like if you're looking down at a rice paddy from the top, okay? Now, when does this word get used? Well, basically, this second one, I guess I should put this one first. Okay, Tanaka-san. All right, Tanaka-san. Really, really common name in Japan, okay? So we're always going to be hearing about Tanaka-san in our, our listening and our reading and things like this. All right, so Tanaka. So this is, if you can read this name, Tanaka-san, you you'll know this kanji well enough to um, do well in year 12, I would say. Now, there is another really handy word that we should learn, okay, for talking about Japan. Now, the reason I put this is because it could come up, you know, we could be talking about Nihon no Suiden no Hanashi. All right, we could be talking about rice fields in Japan, for example, okay? And the good thing about this word is that it helps you remember the den reading, okay? That our onyomi, right? So this is what I said. We want to learn words which can help us remember the the on yomi, okay, very important. So, suiden, this is a rice field or a rice paddy, right? Let me see if we have our kanji for water, kind of makes sense. All right, next one, we have hon, okay? This is actually a really uh, cool kanji. I like this one quite a lot. Very, very archaic, ancient kanji. It's been around for a long time. Um, now, most of you will know it as hon, okay? And this is a very good way to remember this kanji, all right? It just means book. But, as you can see here in the, in the yellow, it's got quite a, some eclectic, different <laughs> meanings from book, okay? We see present, main, origin, true, real, and counter for long cylindrical things. So, I mean, I would I highlight all these because I think they're all good to know, all right? Especially these ones of true and origin. This is very good to remember, okay? So, for example, we have words like honto, all right? Honto. Oh, I should write these in kanji. Okay, now the to is, I noticed, and in year 12 at least, it's often written in hiragana because it's not a year 12 kanji. But anyway, honto. So this means really, you know, or real. Honto des, it's real. Uh, what else we got? Origin, okay, yep, and true. Uh, the other one is main. So a good word, I think, for main is honshu. All right, this is a word you really go, you really have to know, guys. It's, it's one of the islands of Japan, okay, and it's the really big island in the middle. All right, the, the main one that Tokyo and Osaka and of course Nagoya is on as well. All right, so what are our, what are our islands of Japan? All right, let's go through them. Hokkaido, Honshu, Shikoku, Kyushu. Okay, Okinawa doesn't really count <laughs> as an island. It's kind of subsumed into um, Kyushu. All right, even though it's quite far away. All right, but Honshu. All right, so Shu means island, okay, or state. 
So, kind of makes sense. Honju desu. Okay, and of course we have a Nihon as well. Okay, so now maybe some of you are thinking, oh, that makes a bit more sense now. Like, why why is the word for Japan contain book? Like, what's book got to do with it? Alright, it doesn't mean book in that word. Okay, so but yeah, we can get away with learning Hon. Uh, motto is, is handy, but I would say it's, it's not going to come up much in year 12. Uh, for example, a lot of names, alright, if we look at names like this. Alright, Yamamoto-san. Alright, could be one of those. Ah, thanks for uh, having a bit of a chat there, Broads529. I appreciate the uh, support. Yeah, if you could uh, guys give a like and a subscribe to the channel, uh, whenever I go live, you'll get um, more videos. I'm actually, I'm really happy how this, how the production of these videos has been going recently. So I'm thinking I might be doing a few more per week. I just wanted to see how a weekly video would go, and I think it's it's going quite nicely if I do say so myself. Uh, I, I send these videos to my students, my current students, all the time, uh, especially if we've kind of gone over something and they want to do a bit of revision a bit later. So they they said that the videos are, are quite handy for that. And when I look at the metrics, actually, I notice that the um, the counting video and the dear one have done quite well. So those those are more kind of more recent videos, but counting, especially, I tell everyone to go watch that one because it's a super big topic in year twelve. Anyway, enough of that. Next one, okay, this is a really important one. I don't know why I even bother saying that anymore. But all right, so we should read this as soto. Soto, all right. So we're going to see this a bit later in our directions. We're going to do it at the end of the lesson. But soto just means outside, okay? This kanji means outside, okay? And so the word that we're going to come across this very commonly, though, is gaikokujin. Gaikokujin, all right? We have to remember this one. Oboitoite kudasai. Okay? Uh, so, you know, gai, this means outside. Koku, this is our country for kuni, right? Kuni, this is country. And jin, alright, so person. Alright, so gai koku jin. Alright, so outside country person. Alright, basically an alien or a foreigner. Not an alien as in space alien, we've got a different word for that. Uchu jin, desu ne. Okay, so yeah, this, this word will help us remember. Gai. Alright, um, that's about all I wanted to say with that. Outside, soto. Yep. Okay. Next one. Now, this is uh, causes a bit of consternation uh, for a lot of people. First of all, a lot of people sometimes read this as yama. Okay, this is not yama. We've we've seen yama before. Yama is a bit simpler. All right. This is yama. All right. We don't have that kind of second tier on the top there. Yama. Very simple. Ichi ni san. All right. San wa uh, san ga. Gasuasan, All right, but a little bit different from yama. All right, so what are the? Oops, don't know why I bolded these. Yoip. All right, so deru and dasu. Okay. Now, the difference between deru and dasu, you pretty much, most people are only going to learn this in year 12 level or above, okay? But this is the difference between a transitive and an intransitive verb, okay? Now, deru, this is, I mean, uh, it, it's pr pretty tricky. Deru is, is a very broad word, all right? First of all, it can mean exit, it can mean leave, go out. I wouldn't say come out put out it could and protrude okay it can mean all of these ones now I've actually added a last one down the word our, our sentence okay so we have kaigi ni deru okay so we also see it has this additional end um, meaning of attend all right so to attend a conference uh, we hear this a lot in, um, in, in well I used to hear this a lot in school all right we'd hear this word shuseki shuseki all right, and this is basically attendance, the role. Okay, so deru, very handy word. Now, dasu, okay, also very important, all right? And this kind of means to put something out, right? You know, to, for um, goods or whatever, dasu. All right, but also say like if a, um, there's a very common sign you see all over Japan. All right. 
飛び出し注意。飛び出し注意。Okay? Now, 飛び出し、so, 飛ぶ、so, the 飛び、the first part, 飛ぶ、this is to fly, alright? And 出す、you know, to come out of. So, 飛び出し is,、uh, it's basically, to, it's a sign warning motorists. That there are children nearby, okay? And you know, Japanese houses and neighborhoods, whatever, it's kind of all very cramped and small, and there's alleyways and stuff. And kids, if they're playing soccer or whatever on the street, they can,、um, you know, just kind of appear in front of you if they're running, okay? You've got no real warning if, if, because there's blind corners and stuff. So, tobi dashi chui just means, hey, be careful, there, there are kids kind of running around here, so drive a bit slowly, okay? So, dashi, tobi dashi chui. Okay, so I would say both of these words are equally important. And of particular importance is learning the difference between the two. But I will be doing,、um, I've got a lesson slated for intransitive and transitive verbs a bit later, so we'll be going through that in a fair bit of detail. But yeah, a bit of a tricky. This is,、uh, I would say, one of the major grammar things you have to learn in year 12, these transitive and transitive verbs. And it's not so much you have to know all of them, but of the verbs you already know, You're going to have to know very common intransitive versions of a lot of them. The main one is talking about when doors are opened. Okay, so we saw, I don't really want to go into this right now, but we, you know, the difference between doa o akeru, doa ga aku. Okay, the door, I open the door versus the door opens. All right, learning the difference between these two is very important. Okay, and then、uh, the other reading we really should learn is shutsu. Okay, this、um, comes up quite a lot, shutsu. Alright, shutseki is one example.、Um, Alright, we can have shupatsu. We often see the tsu gets small with these. Alright, next one, a bit of a simple one. Alright, we just got fuyu. Alright, this is winter. So, again, if we're looking at words we have to know, we have to know all four, for all four seasons, okay? Shiki. Alright, so shiki is four seasons. So, ino wa fuyu. Fuyu desu ka ne? Australia wa. Chotto wa ka ne desu. But, natsu. Haru, aki. Okay? You need to know all four of these. And normally you're going to come across them as fuyu yasumi, natsu yasumi. Okay? Our summer and winter vacations. Okay? Don't worry about to or for yet,、uh, right yet. Alright? Fuyu, we can get away with. Alright, next one. Alright,、uh, not really worth learning the kunyomi for this one. Okay? A bit of a weird one. I would just recommend learning the onyomi only. Okay? And this word means half. This kanji means half. Alright? So. First of all, we're going to get, get this in time. I probably should have put this up as an example. But we could, I could have sworn we did. I must have deleted it. Alright, so we can say Sanji Ha. Alright, so this is just 3 30. Okay, so it's an easier way rather than saying Sanji Pun, which is a bit long. We can just say Sanji Ha. Okay, but we see this in、uh, some other words which I would recommend learning. Okay, so Zen Ha. And kohan, alright, bit of a, just be careful of this, alright? This, this kanji, a lot of you probably will read it as a go, okay? But here we read it as kohan, alright? So this is a bit of a World Cup, you know, we're in the middle of the World Cup, and Japan's got a game tonight, I think, actually, or tomorrow. But,、uh, you know, if we're gonna talk about the World Cup, so let's have a read here. Nisen, Ju Hachi, FIFA, World Cup, okay? Now, this stuff in the brackets here, this is kind of interesting. This shows you what、uh, kanji is like. So, this is how the World Cup, the World Cup is, is written in Japanese, okay? You don't ever pronounce it like this, but it's written like this. So, in newspapers, for example. So, W, of course, world. I shouldn't say, of course, it, W stands for world. And this is the kanji for cup. For, all right, so when you talk about、um, drinking, you know, you, you talk about how many cups, right? Ippai, nihai, sampai. All right? So, Yeah, this is the short way of writing the World Cup. Anyway, so Zen Hunt, the first half of a soccer match, Ko Hunt, the second half. Okay, next one. This is a、uh, woman. Ah,、uh, not woman, sorry. Looking at the wrong one. Yeah, sorry. I、uh, have not woman, mother. Okay, so we can get by with just learning haha. Okay, so this, remember, this is how you refer to your mother, haha.、Um, and we can also read this as Oka san. This one down. Okaza. Okaza. Yeah. So I've just got a bit of a joke here. This is, um, this is, uh, <laughs> uh, 
uh, part of a tongue twister, all right, that I, I've seen before. All right, but we read this as ha ha wa ha ha to warao. All right, so it's basically my mum laughs like ha ha. Okay, bit of a joke. And then the next bit is ha ha no ha ha wa ha 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 to warao. All right, see if you can work that one out. Okay, but ha ha and okasa that'll get you by. All right, next one, another family member. Okay, I don't know why I highlighted that. You don't need to know that one. Um, it's not even worth learning this cure, I'd say. Okay, but Ani. All right. So this is our elder brother. Okay. So Oni san Ani. You know, notice we have an O and an A. All right. It's a changing sound. But between the two of these, you'll get by with this kanji. Um, I guess I could. No, I probably should put this word up here. So we can have this one. All right. Let's do it. All right. Kill a date. Now, this is technically it's you know it's older brother and younger brother these two kanji, uh, but it, it really just means siblings. Okay, it includes uh, females as well. Okay, now you can say shimai, shimai, and that means sisters. All right, but kyodai is kind of used interchangeably. It just means siblings. Okay, next one. This is one uh, chronically under understudied by a lot of people. I would say. But this one we read as she, okay? It's probably best to recognize this one as she, okay? And we can see our English, it means market, city, or town, okay? So we see this a lot when we're talking about administrative regions in Japan, okay? A city is kind of, you know, it's just like in, a, in, in Australia, right? Cities are like a, a conglomeration of suburbs kind of thing. Like it's a, it's a bigger level than cities, bigger than town as well. City kind of sits up the top. On the hierarchy above that, I guess we have you know prefectures and things like you know Osaka to, sorry Osaka fu Tokyo to these kind of administrative areas, right? That's, there's not much, not many things higher than city though, that's for sure. All right, so yeah, so for example, this one Nagoya shi, Nagoya shi. All right, so it's city of Nagoya, and this word also very um, good to learn. It can come up a lot when we're talking about directions or buying or shopping, you know, these are big topics in year 12. So, ichiba. Ichiba. All right. Now, this shijo, uh, don't worry about this. I should probably just delete this. Okay. But just so you know, shijo is like when we're talking about the concept of a market. So, for example, in economics, okay, that the market for widgets, okay, it'll be shijo. All right. It's the same kanji do, but it's, it's basically an ichiba is like a physical market. Shijo is an abstract market, okay? But yeah, we can get by, I think, with shi. It would be good to learn this word ichiba. It's it's possible that it could come up in year 12. All right, this one. This is a really, really good kanji. And again, a lot of people, I think, don't look at this one much. All right, now, it is definitely a receptive kanji, right? You're never going to be asked to write it. But it comes up in a lot of different compounds, I would say. There's like five or so compounds that this that they legitimately could use in year 12, all right? And then a lot of people would complain, go, oh, but, uh, but no, they could definitely use it. First of all, it's on the list of receptive kanji, but these words are very useful, okay? So they could come up. Now, don't worry about the kunyomi for this one. It's best just to learn the onyomi, all right, which is your, okay? And we see the English means utilize. Uh, I think service is also another good one to learn, but just kind of think of it as this kind of use or like a business kind of kanji, okay? Now, one word I think is probably the best one to learn is yoji. All right, this is kind of like an errand or a task that you have to do, okay? So people, you know, especially if we're talking about directions or meeting people or whatever, you know, chotto yoji ga arimasu. Chotto yoji ga aru no de saki ni oshitsurei shimasu. All right, yoji. Good one to learn this one. Okay, next we have a direction. Okay, so north. Okay, kita. Uh, I wouldn't really recommend learning the onyomi for this, but uh, it'll it, it becomes a lot more useful later. But for now, you really only ever will be asked to um, talk about kita. All right. Now I used to use this word quite a lot actually when I was in Japan working at the hotel because I had to tell people the directions to the hotel. And until I kind of uh, was got better at saying it, I used to say, Kita homen, <laughs> mugatte kudasai. All right, so please turn towards the northerly direction. Okay, and then uh, eventually I had one person go, yeah, well, I don't, 
I don't know where north is. I was like, oh no. Uh, so then I had to think of a different way to explain it. Okay, but I did use that for quite a while. Next one. Okay, this is probably one that's fairly familiar to a lot of you. Okay, this is our tatsu. All right, to stand up. Our uh, kanji for tatsu. Now, notice here, I've also uh, highlighted this one, erect. Okay, so to like to basically when we're talking about, you know, building a building or bringing a starting something up, you know, we often use this tatsu. Uh, we also think of like when we think about, for example, public and private schools in Japan. For private, we have shiritsu. and koritsu. Okay, so shiritsu, private, koritsu, public. All right. So we, we see this quite a lot in uh, Japan. Okay, shiritsu ko, koritsu ko. All right, I mean, these words could definitely come up though, but mm, don't prioritize it. Really, if you remember this as tatsu, that would be enough, I think. But if you, if you can also remember this ritsu, I think it'll put you in good stead. Um, for a bit longer. We have words like ripa, nahito, but this is a bit of an advanced word, probably more of a JLPT N4, N3 word, ripa, but uses this kanji. All right, now I did put this word in here, seiritsu, okay, which is like formation, establishment of something, uh, kind of unlikely to come up, but it is a good word to learn both of these kanji and both of these kanji on your year 12 list. So technically it could come up, but perhaps um, not examinable, I would say. If you, I would say, I mean, really only th learn that kind of word if you feel very confident in your uh, exams or you're looking at doing JLPT. Okay, next one. Actually, this is the last one, I believe. Yeah. Okay. So this is a really good one. Uh, I, I'm actually kind of interested that they put this in uh, in the Year Twelve Kanji list, but really we read this as e. Now I didn't even bother highlighting this English because I. I uh, to be honest, I never learned the English for this kanji. I just, I feel, I'll put this, I put this list of words here, and this should give you an idea of what this word is like. So first off, we have igai. All right, so we see like with the exception of accepting, but this can also mean like an unusual occurrence, right? So out of the ordinary. Okay, so igai na hito deshita. It was a, he was a strange, strange person. Okay, um, iko. All right, so it's like thereafter. Now this core kanji, this is actually, you, um, some of you might recognize this from furu, all right, ame ga furu, it rains. Also oriru, which is to get off like a bus or a train, okay? So you kind of see it's like kind of this, you know, this kind of image, right? It's like continuing on or after or something, you know, rain's falling, getting off a train or whatever, you know, continues on. So iku, all right, so as from hereafter. Okay, but a bit of a technical word, and it's very likely only going to come up in reading, all right, if it comes up at all, and very likely they're going to give you furigana above the top of it, at least for the core part. Secondly, uh, this is a, a very similar to the first one, but just kind of the opposite meaning, so izen, izen, all right, so since, before, previous, okay, izen. Now, ijo, uh, this is, I heard this word quite a lot, and you hear this a lot in speeches, for example, all right, so uh, I remember at the my, at school assemblies when I was in Japan, the you know some teacher would get up and do some speech, and then some teachers at the end would just say, they'll just kind of be doing their speech, and then they would take a pause and say, Ijo desu, all right? Ijo desu. Then they would exit. All right, so like that's it. You know, I'm done. Nothing more to say, basically. All right, so it's somewhere, yeah, here the number two. Nothing further to say. Okay, but we see it also got some other meanings, right? Cannot pay more than that, more than, above mentioned, foregoing. Okay, so it's got a very broad meaning, all right? Ijo. So you could say something like, So this there. 180 centi. Ijo dewa nai hito wa basketball wa pro basket no centi ni. Nademasen. Something like this, right? You can't become a pro basketball player if you're less than 180 centimeters. Something like that. Okay, and ika, right? Kind of our flip. Whoops. Yeah, a flip of ijo, right? Ika. And also, by the way, that, that these words are really good to remember the second kanji, right? It's a bit of a sanity check to think, well, what is that? How do we read that second kanji with the onyomi? Okay, and ika, kind of very, just the flip of ijo. 
Okay, so that's kanji. Uh, so I can't actually remember. I think. Go. Yeah, so we're at the end of five strokes, all right? So we'll be starting six strokes uh, next week, see how many there are. Um, there's kind of less and less kanji as we go more and more strokes. All right, directions. All right, so my, my plan was just kind of to go through this word list uh, kind of quickly, and uh, then we'll continue on with it next week, though, okay? We'll look at some few more words, and then we're going to be looking at a map. We're going to kind of practice, kind of saying, well, how do we get from here to here, here to here, here to here? And we'll do it kind of true Japanese listening style, where it's like, oh, okay, I want to go here for this reason, and then uh, I, I then I change my mind, I want to go somewhere else, or something like, hey, I want to eat some delicious food. Can you give me any recommendations? All right. So we, I often use this as a really good uh, warm up with my students. Okay, because first of all, it helps them practice listening to Japanese, right? Because I'm asking them questions. Second, it helps them practice responding to Japanese. Okay, because I'm giving them a question, they have to give me a proper answer. Uh, and I'm, I'm often very cruel, i got to say, when I do this, all right? I'll ask these kind of vague questions or I'll ask something very specific and then unless they give me the information I want, I'm going to keep saying it. You know, I'll keep getting them to say it. All right, but it's very, I think it's very good practice to have this back and forth in a conversation, okay? Uh, anyway, but directions. Let's look at these. Okay, so these are all the names of the shops that we're going to see in the map uh, for next week, okay? But we have Sakaya. Okay, notice ka. All right, Sake is alcohol, Sakaya. This is our bottle shop. Now, I've got to say that it's not super important to know this word um, because alcohol is kind of sold very widely in Japan, in konbini, for example, and supermarkets. So you don't really need to worry about going to bottle shops unless you're like looking for specific sake or whatever, right? Okay, Sakanaya kind of makes sense, right? So we're already seeing a bit of a pattern here. Shops in Japan, we kind of say, well, we have the object that they sell, and then we have roof, okay? And together, this is a shop. So, sakana, yeah. Fishmonger, okay. Fuku, yeah. This is a clothes shop. Now, I want to point out that um, this, it's generally a Western style clothes shop, okay? It won't be Japanese clothes, right? So, you, for example, you won't find kimono, I would say, in a fuku, yeah. This is kind of Western style, so dresses and all those kind of things. Okay, we have Italia Ryori. All right, so ryori, this word means cooking, okay? But it's kind of broad, so we can say cuisine, dish, you know, these kind of words as well. So Italia ryori, Italian cooking. All right, katakana, steaky house. All right, steakhouse, actually pretty popular in Japan. Okay, now if we've got actually Japanese food that's being served, normally we say washoku. Okay, we could say nihon ryori, but... If it, I, I was asking a Japanese person about this, and they said, "I ah, probably you're gonna say washoku, washoku tabetai." I want to eat some Japanese food. You probably wouldn't say nihon ryori tabetai. It's kind of like I don't know. I can't think of a good example, but it's like if I was gonna say, "I want to eat some Australian cooking," it's like, well, everything kind of in Australia is by default Australian cooking, but washoku is specifically talking about Japanese food. Okay, we'll see this kanji a lot gets used for referring to Japanese concepts. Okay, we have a restaurant. All right, now again, just like our fukuya, restaurant, restaurant is kind of talking about Western style food generally. Okay, not always, but that's kind of the image you create in people's heads. Next one, okay, got quite a tricky kanji. I don't have to worry about this too much. This will pretty much always be written in hiragana in year 12, unless it's got its furigana. But kutsuya, okay, shoe stop, shoe store. All right, denkiya-san. Oh, i got to change this, sorry. This is what I had there before. Denkiya-san. Denkiya-san. All right, so electronic goods. Okay, so if we think about Bikku Kamara, this is a massive uh, chain franchise in Japan. Bikku Kamara, really funny uh, ads. But the annoying thing is, if you go into the stores, they're constantly playing the the ads for their own ads. And man, I I, I would go crazy working there after a while. Okay, Fastofood. Okay, pretty self-explanatory. Kyokai. Uh, all right, this is a word perhaps some of you won't come across too often, but church, okay? Now, this is specifically generally talking about um, generally kind of world religions, okay? So, Christianity and the, all the various sects kind of get um, put into this. Normally, yeah, normally that's what it is. Now, in Japan, there aren't actually that many of these churches, and if they are, they're not, I mean, they're not, real churches, I would say that they don't generally hold 
for example, Saturday or Sunday services, uh, what they're really there for is so people can have white weddings there. <laughs> that's, I know that seems a bit strange, but that's the only reason a lot of these churches exist in Japan. It's a very small Christ, um, active Christian population in Japan, but they do exist. You can see them around. But generally, if you see them, especially if they look kind of gaudy, uh, you know, that's what they're, for. <laughs> that's what they're there for. Uh, by the way, if you uh, want to earn good money in Japan, that's a very um, viable job. You don't have to speak much Japanese to do it either, though it does help. Uh, Alright, next one. Koen. Alright, most of you probably know this word. Koen. Alright, so this is a public park, okay? This is what this core means. It means public. And N just means garden. Alright, now this is specifically from the map we'll be looking at later, but we have a city hotel. Okay, city hotel. So just the name of a place. Uh, next one. Ginko. Ginko. Okay, our bank. Alright, now gin actually means silver. Alright, and core, this is our. Iku kanji, right? To go. Uh, so this is actually kind of a good word to remember. Uh, core, all right. But when we talk about the medals, the Olympics, kin medal, gin medal, do medal. Okay, uh, three medals for the Olympics. So you know you can kind of think it's silver moving around is a bank. Kind of makes sense. Okay, next one we got panya, panya. Okay, so th those of you who speak a bit of French, you'll recognize that pan is bread. So panya. A bakery. Okay, this one bit bit of a tricky one. Yakyoku. Okay, so the the ya is ac it's actually yaku, but whatever. It's kusuri. All right, this is medicine. And kyoku, this is like a bureau. Okay, so drug bureau, I guess. But generally, kyoku is actually used for government or public buildings. But just think of it as office or bureau or something. So yakyoku. All right, next one. Supermarket. Alright, often just gets abbreviated to SUPA, okay, so this is kind of, uh, you know, general shopping, okay, if grocery shopping, uh, generally pretty cheap. Uh, most people do their shopping at the SUPA. Next one, alright, we got BYOIN. BYOIN, okay, this is our hospital. Now again, it's good to look at the kanji for this and it helps you remember this word, but BYO, this kind of means sickness or illness, and IN, uh, just kind of means, again, it kind of means a building or um, an institution, I guess, if we want to think of this word as institution. But for example, we can say, Byo ki. Byo ki. Genki no ki desu ne. Genki no ki. Byo ki. Alright, so this is like, Byo ki na hito. Alright, a sick person. Alright, Byo in. Okay, this kanji it might seem a bit strange to you guys. Don't worry about the kanji for this one so much. But just remember the word, yao ya. Yao ya. This is our green grocer, so fruit and vegetables. Okay, last few, I think these are. So, ega kan. I think most of you should know this one by now. Movie, so ega, movie, ega kan. Movie theater, so kan, you know, this just means a building basically. Uh, hana ya. So, a flower shop, not a nose shop. Chu sha jo. Alright, a parking lot, parking space. Um, sports yo hin ten. Alright, bit of a long one. Sports are your hint and so basically sporting goods, clothes, you know, all these kind of things. Now, you generally you would say sports are your hint and if you want to, you know, sports are your hint and ikita in desu But uh, you could also just say sports authority. Okay, this is a major franchise in Japan, so most people, I would say, every Japanese person is going to know what you talk about when you if you say this, if you pronounce it right, of course, by the way. Uh, next one is concert hall. All right, concert hall. Okay, now in the map they have a music shop, and I was kind of thinking uh, you don't really say like ongaku ya or whatever like that. It's kind of kind of weird. Um, and again, I was asked a Japanese person, and they just say, "Well, you just say it's taya," because this is the the biggest uh, music and book shop kind of franchise in Japan. So again, taya ikitai. I want to go to Staya. All right. Uh, by the way, if you're ever in Tokyo, or whatever, um, there's a, there's massive ones. There's well, there's in all the big cities. There's massive Staya, and if you're looking to kill a bit of time, great place to go to. It's just you can spend hours in there. Okay, next one. So departo. All right. So an abbreviation of departo mento store. Okay, but I've, I don't think I've ever heard anyone say that before. It's just always departo. Okay. So these are a bit more kōkyū desu ne. Bit, bit higher priced, a bit more luxury goods. You can buy really nice omiyage 
our souvenirs, all these kind of things. Uh, very nice. Um, you know, kind of like Maya or David Jones or uh, these kind of, you know, department stores. A bit more expensive. Not many people would do their everyday shopping there, for example. Okay, uh, we also have a Kekiya. Um, very similar to a Panyasan, you know, but I guess they do have separate words sometimes. Uh, Honya. Okay, so this is uh, different from a library. Okay, this is an actual bookstore. Uh, we have Kissaten. All right, our coffee shop. Now, you can say cafe if you want. Um, Kohiya, unlikely. Kissaten. Okay, this is going to be your the main word that you use for this. Okay, uh, Yubin Kyoku. Okay, I'm sure a lot of you know this one by now. Yubin Kyoku. So Yubin is the male, right? A uh, pretty tricky country, this one, but yeah. Yubin Kyoku. And Kyoku, Kyoku again, like we saw in now. Uh, Yakyoku, it means office or bureau. Okay, last few. We have pub. Alright, so this is like generally a Western style pub. Alright, so, you know, just kind of drinking um, only. So if you compare it to Izakaya, you know, a Japanese style tavern that has generally seating, seating where you can eat, um, you know, Japanese food. Generally the meibutsu of that area, okay, the specialty food. So that's the difference between a pub and Izakaya. Also, um, you know, non-Japanese tend to congregate in pub rather than izakaya. Izakaya, it's kind of, it's not really meant for socializing that much, I would say. Pubs are definitely meant for socializing. Izakaya, you generally sit in a booth, so it's kind of hard to join with other people. Okay, next one, we have michi. Alright, this is our road. Really important word to learn whenever we're dealing with directions. Hashi, there's yeah, probably some English in here. Okay, bridge. Hashi. Uh, next one, Shingo is so our traffic lights. Okay, really good one to know. Uh, Kosaten. All right, so our intersection or a crossing. Um, if we want to remember this word, I know it can be a bit tr a bit of a long one, but we just think of Shibuya Kosaten. Shibuya Kosaten. Okay, so whenever you see some kind of news. Or documentary or something on Japan, almost invariably they're going to show some time lapse or sped up footage of the Shibuya Kosaten. Okay, it's this massive crosswalk that's out the front of Shibuya Eki, Shibuya train station. Okay, and it's it's really cool. I mean, I, if you guys are ever in Tokyo, I would go down. I'd recommend you go down and uh, check it out. It's a really fun area, actually, Shibuya. But yeah, it's uh, it's just this massive crosswalk that. Um, you know, when it goes, there's just, you know, there's massive people waiting on both sides just to cross. Uh, it's pretty cool. I would I recommend you guys try it out if you ever get over to Japan, which 100% recommend you do, of course. But, Hashi. Uh, okay. Course I can. Okay, Wataru. Alright, I probably should have put this with uh, bridge, okay? But we normally say Hashi o Wataru. Okay, cross a bridge. But we can say it with other ones. We can use it with other words as well. But to cross something. Okay, this word comes up quite a lot actually in directions, is gawa. Okay, this country means to the side of. So we can say hidari gawa, left side, migi gawa. Okay, uchi gawa, inside, uragawa, outside. Very similar to soto and naka. But you, normally we're talking about the, like it's like a, you know, a box or something, the inside and outside of the box, like the actual side of it, is when we use these words. Also, uh, we'll see a word a bit later, hantai, so hantai gawa, the opposite side. Okay, this word we really have to know if we're going to talk about directions, okay? So, korban. Korban. Okay, so this is our police box. Alright, so basically just a very small police station. Sometimes, like, literally as big as a telephone box. Okay? But sometimes they'll be a little bit bigger. But these are just little local police stations where we normally just have a solitary police officer sitting in them. And uh, they're just kind of supposed to help with that local area, okay? So, for example, lost and found, they kind of are the repository for all that stuff. And the best thing about the Korban is that they'll have a really detailed map of the area in the Korban. So, if you get lost, best thing is always go to a Korban and go, ah, oh, chotto. My god, you know, you know, I've become a bit lost. And if you're looking for a shop or something in particular, especially in Tokyo again, um, you know, they can they can help you find it. So, yeah, really helpful, the Korban. Zeti, itte kurasai. Komatta tokiba, zehi koban itte kurasai. 
Okay, but yeah, comes up a lot in uh, listening. All right, our next one, Huntai. I did mention this one just before, okay, but uh, probably don't worry about all of these meanings. We can get away with the opposite, I think. All right, it does mean all those other things, but um, you're not really going to be quizzed on that. I, it could come up in JLPT, okay, but we say Huntai des. You know, I'm against it. I'm opposed to it. Okay, next one. All right, Tonari. All right, so this means next to, okay, and we can use it especially to talk about neighbors, okay. So if we think about the very famous Studio Ghibli film, all right, Tonari Totoro. Tonari, Tonari no Totoro. I always forget this. Tonari no Totoro. Anyway, uh, we should look it up. Tonari no Totoro ne? Okay. Yeah, Tonari no Totoro. All right, so my neighbor Totoro. Okay, so I think this is, uh, by the way, you should really watch that film if you haven't. It's a classic, classic Japanese film. But uh, even if you don't like anime, um, trust me, it's, it's very, very good. But uh, yeah, I would uh, recommend you uh, have a look at that one if you do. And it'll help you remember this word, Tonari. Okay. And notice we often have like no ni with a lot of these, okay? No tonari ni, no yoko ni, nanto ga arimasu. Okay, anyway. Yoko. Okay, so this is like the side of something. Yoko. And we have soba. This is kind of close. Now, a lot of people say, oh, do you mean noodles? No, no, Well, yes, soba is also noodles, but soba is both noodles or close to. Okay, approximately. Masugu. All right, we should probably add some more ones in here. What else we got? Well, we had Hidari and Migi before. Um, mak naka. Naka. Uh, ushiro. Ue. Shita. Naka, ushiro, ue, shita, mae. Okay, I think that's about enough. All right, so inside, behind, above, uh, below, in front of. Actually, we should do this one as well. Temae, because that's going to come up in our dialogue. Temae. This is like directly in front of. Departo no temae no michi. Alright, the road directly in front of the departo. Okay, I think we'll leave it there for this week. So next week we'll be doing a pretty similar uh, lesson actually. We'll be continuing on with the kanji and then at the end we'll be uh, looking at the actual directions part itself. Okay, so we'll be doing some practice there. Uh, so yeah, uh, oh hi Javan. Just notice you in the, the chat there. How are you going? Thanks for joining in. Um, <laughs> yeah, hope you're doing well. Um, yeah, so just uh, I think we'll leave it there. So thanks so much for watching, guys. Uh, please leave a, a like and a, a comment and a subscribe so you get notified of uh, future videos. And um, yeah, I look forward to seeing you all next week. And enjoy... <laughs> Enjoy your uh, enjoy your weekends. Um, well, sorry, not your weekends. Enjoy your week, and thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.